What is the first book to start in learning differential geometry? What is the best choice to select books? What are the most common mistakes that you make while reading books? What is the method and sequence of study? Will you learn the proofs first or go directly to the problems? Is it difficult to start learning differential geometry? In this video, I am going to answer all those questions and I am going to give you the right choice of books. I am also going to go through each chapter of the book, explain them to you and tell you the right method of study. Remember, a wrong choice right at the beginning might destroy your interest as well as love for the subject forever and you may never find it interesting to study. So please be careful. Well, my name is Shonak and you are watching this video on my channel Physics for Students. Welcome to yet another new episode. What is the right book to start learning differential geometry? Well, we would go through the book and the further details. But first, let us see what are the topics that we are covering today. We will first learn what are the mistakes that we make. Because until we recognize them, we will continue making these mistakes forever and we will fall into a forever loop. How to overcome the mistakes? That would be today's focus. The very first book to start with. What is the edition you should select? What are the reviews that are published at Amazon about that book? Who should read this book? I mean to say the target audience. What is the content of the book? And importantly, how to get this book? Remember, I am making this video after going through at least 20 to 25 books on differential geometry and that is how I have come to this book and I want to make you very careful that while you are selecting the book in order to study for the first time, be very careful in understanding which book you select. So first we will understand what are the common mistakes that we make and how we can overcome those. So as you see, the differential geometry as itself can be divided into two parts. The first is the extrinsic differential geometry, which basically consists of sub-manifolds of Euclidean space. And these are easy to visualize because they are mostly on R3 or a three-dimensional space. Now the intrinsic geometry are basically manifolds which contains the Riemannian metric and other metric spaces. And these are difficult to visualize because they are very, very abstract. The question is that when we are talking about difficulties in terms of visualizing and something which is easy to visualize, what is the way and what is the path that we should take? Now see the common mistakes that you make is that first you do not have the necessary mathematical prerequisites and you immediately jump to dif differential geometry. You get frustrated, you get problems and you get rejection. Now, I have talked at length what are the prerequisites, even what are the books that you should read before getting prepared for differential geometry. I would request you to look into my earlier videos, which is there in the playlist of differential geometry. So, my advice would be, please go through that video and first learn that, yes, are you ready with those mathematical tools to jump to learn differential geometry? If yes, you can go ahead. If not, then please go ahead and learn those prerequisites and then come to differential geometry. The second problem is that you directly jump solving the problems. And what is the effect is that you waste time because you are unable to solve it. You get confused. You look around here and there, uh, you know, uh, the blogs and the YouTube videos, etc. And you look around to find the right solution, but you waste a lot of time and you do not do. And the third one is that you get into the mathematics to know without the reason which is the most important factor and we are going to uh, make a remedy out of that. You make mistakes, you are unable to visualize and the abstract mathematics becomes an enemy for you. That means that it is no longer an abstract mathematics but you try to fly away and try to avoid those things. The question is that what is the solution? Now these are the things which are very common Knowingly or unknowingly, you make a mistake or we make a mistake without understanding, we jump directly to the problems. What is the solution coming up in the next part of our video? 
So today's focus would be in this video we would focus on which book specifically we would be talking of one book because unnecessarily dealing with many books doesn't really make sense. Uh, we what and why we should read the book and how shall we study and most importantly what is the process and method of study. Now I would like to tell you that because there might be many other books which I have spoken earlier in the videos as well as this book, you might want all those books with you. But remember there is a problem which is called a choice overload. If you have too many books, you won't go through it. If you have too many texts, you won't read through it. If you have too many solutions, you won't run through the solutions. So what will happen? It will remain in the text box, in the text of that or in your inbox or in your hard drive. So let us pick up one book, concentrate, learn that and that would solve our problem. So the first thing is that you understand, we need to understand why you are studying the subject. If you understand why you study the object, then you get a proper direction and objective that, okay, so I know what I am learning and what is the direction. Now, once you get a proper direction, you start seeing what is in front of you. That means, okay, this is not abstract, but something I can see that this is the result, this is the outcome, and this is the practical application. And what will happen is that abstract mathematics starts to become concrete. As I was telling that if you jump directly without knowing the objective, it will forever remain as an abstract enemy. But if you start seeing what is in front of you, the abstract mathematics starts to become concrete. You can understand the practical application of the subject, which will give you a concrete reason that when you do the mathematics, you do it with a proper reason. What is the final outcome of all those things that we are talking? You would start loving differential geometry and I can tell you it is one of the most modern and one of the most interesting subject which can give you a great career and a great learning ahead. So what is the first book to start with? Now before we start mentioning about the book, we should know what is the objective. So we will enjoy the learning differential geometry to know the present we need to know a little bit about the past you really know the reason why those theorems came and once you know the reason why those theorems came the learning becomes much more effective so this is the reason that why you should read this book to enjoy to know the present and you know what the theorems coming from so that the understanding become fun Okay, so there are several editions of the book that I'm talking about. This is the book called Euclidean and Non-Euclidean Geometries, Development and History by Marvin J. Grinberg. And this is the book we are going to talk about. It contains the mathematics, it contains proofs and many other things which you are yet to explore. Explore. So the first edition would do like look like this. The second edition has changed its color. The third edition would be this and the fourth edition is the black one. So more or less you can expect the fourth edition. The first and second are there but I won't recommend to read it. So let us start with the third edition and the total number of pages are around 665. It's a quite a heavy book to read. Okay, so what is the price at Amazon? It is around, in India, Amazon, it is around 26,000, 17,000. And if you want to buy a paperback, it is 16,625. Don't worry about the price. There is an element of surprise waiting at you. How do you get this book? Okay, if I go to Amazon.com, then it is around $13.34. And it comes for around $34. And the fourth edition comes for about $99. $0.95. So you see here we get the uh, the third and the fourth edition but if I go to Amazon India I even get the first, second, third and the fourth edition and if you go, off, go for an e-textbook it would be around uh, how much it's coming to 63 to something that's it. Okay. So this is the book. Uh, it has got an Amazon rating of 66%. This is the professor. He is an American professor of mathematics, Marvin J. Greenberg, and received his doctorate from Princeton University under the famous Sir Glang. And you know who is Sir Glang? Got a lot of books on differential geometry and specifically on linear algebra. Okay, what is the review at Amazon? So it has got a five star and more or less you can see whether for class or for personal learning, remarkable, somebody has written four stars, it is a good deal. So more or less you can see great content uh, but bad impression, this is this bad impression you can read, it's basically for the printing. But overall that means it says that 
it is it is quite a good book okay question is that who should start reading this book i mean to say who is the target audience so you see the author himself has written over here school and college geometry teachers with a rigorous treatment of the foundations of euclidean geometry and introduction to hyperbolic geometry general education even liberal arts students can go through it who are willing to know the philosophicals implication and the discovery of non euclidean geometry so it is very clear high school and college geometry teachers uh, and a unique, uh, it can go ahead with general education and liberal arts people. Okay, and he has further written that here you see if students do do not do a good number of exercises, they will have difficulty following subsequent chapters. So that means this book which we are going through will have lot of exercises, and I encourage you doing those exercises. Otherwise, you won't be able to learn. Now the question is that before jumping into maths, maths, what are the things that you really need to know? Okay, who should read this book? Now, here is an important thing. See, he has written that I have used the development of non-Euclidean geometry to revive the interest in the study of Euclidean geometry. So you see, it goes the other way round. Instead of going from Euclidean, he starts with non-Euclidean because that is fair more, fairly more interesting. We'll all agree on that so that the people have an interest in Euclidean geometry. So you will learn the non-Euclidean geometry and then you learn Euclidean geometry much better. So I believe that this approach makes a traditional college course in Euclidean geometry more interesting. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah, that's it. And to identify the process, right? So we will see the content of the book very in details. The first would be the Euclid's geometry, which basically starts, you see, we are, we are starting with Euclidean geometry. Why? Because we want to make the base very strong. So there is a very brief survey of the beginnings of geometry. It starts a little bit with the history, that is the Pythagoreans, and then it goes to Euclid of Alexandria. So this is very important because until we know who are the founders and how things happen, it would be difficult. The book goes further into Euclid's first four postulates, attempt to prove the parallel postulate. There are figures like that and that's it. So Descartes analytic geometry is being covered and the briefly the number pi along with, uh, I mean to say, a little bit of history. So you establish a relationship with these geometers and these people were way back in the history and that is how you start learning that. Okay, logic and incidence geometry. Incidence geometry, you all know that when we remove those curves and these functions and angles, what it is is basically the line and the point that is called. So here you see logic and incidence geometry has to start with teaching you what is called elementary logic. So you see it starts with elementary logic, then it teaches the theorems and proof, if hypothesis, then conclusion, and it can be translated. So if first you are again learning logic. Why? Because there will be certain proof-based systems which you need to prove. Then the book will go into see this logic rule and it explains all those symbols also. So if you don't know logical quantifiers, you can take a deep breath because this book is going to teach you that. And you see that incidence axiom 1, 2 and so on. And then at the end, there's a huge number of exercises, projects and uh, things like that. So here you see the definition is given with axiom, a brief history of real projective geometry and what is projective and affine planes. Then we start with Hilbert's axioms, the flaws in Euclid, the axiom of betweenness and what are the axioms of betweenness that is being covered. Then we fourth come to what is called neutral geometry. I have just mentioned those because otherwise it would be too long. It will start with geometry with parallel axiom, then exterior angle theorem, then angle sum of a triangle, conclusion and so on. Then it moves into history of the parallel postulate. So you see, now that we have understood a little bit of the geometry, it is important that we know the history. So it starts with very ancient history of Proclus, then the concept of equidistance, then uh, John Wallace, uh, who made uh, contributions in analytic geometry, the Clorius and Proclus theorem, and then the Farkas Boli. So everything regarding the history of the parallel postulate is covered so that you don't have any problem understanding where from the theorem scheme. The discovery of non-Euclidean geometry is covered. It is a good history and people like Gauss, Riemann and Lobachkowski is being covered. So parallel lines, similar triangles, it is an excellent read. 
Then the seventh chapter speaks of the independence of parallel postulates. So you see the Poincaré model, the inversions in circles, models, Beltrami's interpretation and everything. This is very important. It books contains philosophical implications, fruitful and applications. So here you see what are the philosophical implications. What is the geometry of physical space? Very important. What is mathematics all about? The controversies about foundations of mathematics and the fruitfulness of hyperbolic geometry for other branches of mathematics, cosmology and art. So you see why it is important because uh, once we gone through these seven chapters, now we are going deep into the philosophical implications and fruitful applications. Finally, it goes into geometric transformations, which would include motions and similarities, klein Erlanger, Erlanger program, and this is the entire list of geometric transformation. So now let us take a pause and you understand how well this book is organized. It starts right at the beginning with the history, then it goes into mathematics, then it teaches you logic, then again it goes back to the history of parallel postulate, then it goes back to the mathematics, and then it goes back to the philosophy, and then finally geometric transformations. The 10th chapter deals with further results in hyperbolic geometry. So these are the hyperbolic trigonometry, Sachery lambert quadrilaterals, Boyle's construction and all those things. Finally, it contains uh, an appendix, two appendix, elliptic and other Riemannian geometries, Hilbert's geometry without real numbers. Okay, so what we can summarize from this is that we need to first understand the reason for learning, then how the development of thoughts took place, who uh, the, why those theorem and proofs are developed, what is learning through history which is makes it more interesting and the actual reason then comes in front. So this is kind of a quick summary and this is the first book before going anything into uh, other th things like Gal Gauss's theorem and you know Gauss Bonnet theorem etc. This is the first book. I know it is contains a lot of pages it is a long read but you will see how the entire journey of differential geometry is evolving in front of you you can go and you can live through those philosophers mathematicians starting from greek and coming up to uh, Bolai and other geometers so that is interesting that gives you the motivation and you find and fall in love with differential geometry now the question is that how to get this book you know it is very simple all you need to do is to write me an email or contact me over whatsapp and yes obviously you need to subscribe to my channel physics for students and what i will do is that these are heavy books this is particularly is a heavy book i will share it in google drive download and let me know i would be happy to help you and even more happy that you have watched my video so thank you for watching please subscribe to my channel physics for students click on the bell icon so that immediately you get all the notification from physics for students i've already given the email id so this is once more time and we have i have got a general relativity uh, channel exclusively in youtube and you can follow me on my instagram facebook and linkedin pages thank you for watching this video i hope this is the first step which will be fruitful Full, happy and you will enjoy learning differential geometry going through this particular book please let me know how can i help you further in providing the book or any further explanations or anything that you are stuck up in different geometry or physics thank you for watching